Hey there, my name is Jason Keesaw, and today's video is about cultivating follower trust. The purpose of these videos are to do summaries and reviews of peer-reviewed articles, various pieces of research, and really anything interesting within the social intelligence, social psychology, and organizational development space. Today's piece, Cultivating Follower Trust, are all leader behaviors equally influential, published in Organization Studies by Morella Hernandez, Chris P. Long, and Sim B. Sitkin. A little about me. I work with Traycom Group, the social intelligence company. I've been studying personal, professional, and leadership development for over two decades, and I'm passionate about helping people experience greater security, confidence, purpose, and performance. The idea being when people feel more secure, they will be more confident, and there's a greater chance they will get curious about, pursue, and fulfill their purpose, and have higher performance in everything they are trying to do. Back to the piece. The key discussion points of this video, the purpose is to consider the relationships between three leadership behaviors and follower trust. The three leadership behaviors are personal leadership, relational leadership, and contextual leadership. We'll look at two studies and their key findings. We'll discuss implications for practice in the real world. And we'll end with study conclusions. Three leadership behaviors, personal leadership, relational leadership, contextual leadership. As we're going through each of these, think about which one you think has the greatest impact on building follower trust. Personal leadership. It conveys the leader's personal qualities, such as competence, integrity, and passion. Behavior is essential in establishing a leader's credibility and predictability, which are fundamental for trust. Examples include displaying expertise, adhering to high moral standards, and consistently acting according to one's values. So personal leadership is very much about the perception the follower has on the leader. Are they credible? Are they trustworthy? Relational leadership focuses on the leader-follower relationship, involves fairness, respect, concern for followers, signals to followers that the leader values them and will act in their best interests, and some examples include fair decision-making, showing respect, and actively seeking followers' opinions. Relational leadership is all about the relationship between the leader and the follower, but more importantly, how the follower feels about that relationship. Do they feel like they're treated fairly? Do they feel respected? Do they feel valued? Do they feel like they can give feedback, etc.? Contextual leadership involves behaviors that help followers make sense of organizational environments, includes explaining organizational processes, clarifying roles, and resolving conflicts constructively, crucial for reducing uncertainty, and provides followers a clear understanding of their place within the organization. So this isn't so much about the relationship between the leader and follower, it's more about the relationship between the follower and the organization, and the leader's role in helping them make sense of that, clear roles, clear goals, clear processes, things of that nature to give the follower greater understanding of the organization, greater predictability, know how to move forward and succeed. So when you look at all three of these, they're different. Personal leadership is again the perception the follower has on the leader. Are they credible? Are they trustworthy? Relational leadership is very much about that relationship between the leader and the follower, but more importantly, how does the follower feel about that relationship? Do they feel like they're treated fairly? Do they feel like they're respected? Do they feel like they are valued? Do they feel like their leader has their back? And then contextual leadership is more about the relationship between the follower and the organization and the role the leader plays in helping the follower understand what they need to know about succeeding within the organization. So let's look at the two studies to measure the leadership behaviors and the impact on building trust. The first study includes 289 experienced managers. 
the method experimental design where participants were randomly assigned to scenarios that manipulated levels of personal, relational, and contextual leadership behaviors. The second study included 266 practicing managers who were evaluated by their peers in direct reports, the method 360 degree feedback surveys. The first study, what did they find? They found all three types of leadership behaviors directly influenced follower trust. However, relational leadership behaviors played a mediating role influencing the effectiveness of personal and contextual leadership behaviors in building trust. So all three are important, but relational leadership seemed to be more impactful and positively impacted the effectiveness of the personal and contextual leadership as well. What did study two find? They found that similar to study one, relational leadership behaviors were found to mediate the effects of personal and contextual leadership behaviors on follower trust. And this study provided stronger external validity to the findings from study one. So again, very much about the impact that relational leadership plays on creating and building follower trust. So two key findings from these studies. The first one is the direct influence of the leadership behaviors. Personal, relational, and contextual leadership behaviors each have a direct positive effect on follower trust. Leaders who display competence, integrity, and passion, personal leadership, are trusted because they are seen as credible and reliable. Again, the perception the follower has on the leader. Relational leadership behaviors build trust by showing followers that the leader values and respects them. Again, it's about that one-on-one -on -one relationship and how the follower feels about that relationship. Contextual leadership behaviors reduce uncertainty and help followers understand the organizational environment, which also builds trust. Again, it's more about the follower and the organization, but the role the leader plays in making things easier for the follower. The second key finding, mediating role of relational leadership. Relational leadership behaviors significantly mediate the effects of personal and contextual leadership behaviors on follower trust. This means that the trust building effects of personal and contextual leadership are largely channeled through relational behaviors. For example, a leader's competence, personal leadership, is more likely to build trust if the leader also demonstrates fairness and respect relational leadership. So it's almost as if all three leadership behaviors are important, but the foundation of the relational behaviors will make everything else more effective. Really important takeaways there. So what are some implications for practice in the real world? We'll talk about three of them. Prioritizing relationships, leadership development, communication of organizational context. So prioritizing relational behaviors. Leaders should focus on relational behaviors such as fairness, respect, and concern to build trust. One thing I'll talk about at the end of the video is a program that TRACOM developed called Social Style that really zones in on dominant patterns of behavior and the different needs of preferences of different people. So when we look at what does fair treatment look like? What does respect look like? What does value look like? It may be different for different people and it's important for leaders to understand that. These behaviors are crucial in mediating the effects of personal and contextual leadership on trust. Again, prioritizing those relational behaviors. If you're a leader, making the relational behaviors a priority with your development. The second implication, leadership development. Training programs should emphasize the development of relational leadership skills. Leaders need to be self-aware and attuned to their followers' experiences and perceptions to build and maintain trust effectively. In any leadership and management program I design, the foundation of all of it is emotional and social intelligence with a focus and purpose of developing those relational leadership behaviors. They are that important. They will make everything else easier. And again, 
They may need to be different depending on the person, which we'll get into in a few minutes. And then the third implication, communication of organizational context. Leaders should connect organizational goals and processes to the specific needs and aspirations of their followers. This approach not only clarifies the organizational context, but also demonstrates concern and understanding, further building trust. This is very much about the leader, obviously knowing the ins and outs of the organization, but also getting to know their people and their followers so that they can connect the dots between the organizational goals, the processes, the roles, what's needed from the follower and the direct report to be successful. The study conclusions. The study concludes that not all leader behaviors are equally influential in cultivating follower trust. Relational leadership behaviors are particularly important as they mediate the effects of the personal and contextual leaderships on trust. By prioritizing relational behaviors and understanding their central role, leaders can more effectively build and sustain trust among their followers, ultimately enhancing organizational performance and follower satisfaction. Those relational leadership behaviors are critical and foundation to everything else you want to accomplish within your organization. At TRACOM Group, we create research-based programming to help organizations, leaders, and teams develop those relational behaviors. Our program's social style teaches people how to communicate with greater versatility. Adaptive Mindset for Resilience is about helping people become more adaptive and resilient with changes and challenges. Personal agility for innovation is all about creativity and innovation and influence and executing those ideas. And behavioral EQ is all about enhancing emotional intelligence. Specifically, our social style program focuses in on helping leaders develop those relational leadership behaviors. What the research shows, each of us has a dominant pattern of behavior. We call those patterns of behavior social styles. We have a driving style, expressive style, amiable style, and analytical style. So if you are a leader, when you look at your team, your direct reports, your followers, each of them may have a different social style. And it's really important to understand what the styles are because when we understand the styles, we understand their needs, and their needs will be the key to you developing those relational leadership behaviors with your followers. For example, the driving style, their need is results. They're about action and outcomes. They tend to operate at a faster pace. They tend to be more task oriented. They want to have control and get things done. To build trust with a driving style, you need to lead and manage to that. The expressive style, their need is personal approval. They're also about action and outcomes, but their needs are relational in that process. They are relationship oriented. In the spirit of personal approval, they want your support. They want your excitement and energy in relationship to what excites them, their ideas and what they're looking to accomplish. If you don't share that excitement or give them support, you're not gonna build that trust. Amiable style people, their need is personal security. Yes, they want to do a good job and get the results, but they want more information, more structure, and they want to feel connection with the people they're working with. They're highly relational. If you don't make an effort to build connection and get to know your amiable style team member, they may not trust you. Analytical style, their need is to be right. They also want information and structure. They're task oriented. They want to be accurate. If they make a decision, they want it to be correct. So they tend to work at a slower pace. They tend to take more time to look at data and information to support them making the right decision. If you don't know this about them and you don't respect their need and their pace and their desire to have more information to make that decision, they may not trust you. But the opportunity is, when you work in and communicate in alignment with the needs and preferences of the different styles, 
greater connection occurs, greater trust happens, and there's less miscommunication and conflict because they feel like they're treated fairly. They feel like you as a leader get them and understand them and you make an effort to work and communicate in alignment with that. And that working and communicating in alignment, we call that versatility and that is a predictor of leadership success. So social style can really help you and your team and your organization develop those relational leadership behaviors in a way that makes a difference, not only for leaders' results, but building trusting relationships with followers. To learn more about social style, you can visit traycom.com. You can attend a free social style program showcase. You can purchase an e-learning course. You can register for a public session and attend a training. You can get certified to teach social style within your organization, and you can hire Traycom to teach social style within your organization as well. Please let us know if you have any questions or comments. My contact information is on this slide. Thanks for spending the time with us. Look forward to sharing more information with you in the future. Have a good one.